This is the Fujifilm DL270 Zoom. That is Newport. Hello and welcome to another analog adventure. Before we begin, can I just say thank you? Wow, what's going on? <laughs> it's quite unbelievable how many new people have subscribed in the past month. So thank you so much for subscribing. Honestly, it really helps to keep me motivated to make these videos. Um, so thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Every single one of you behind those screens there are legends. Anyway, in today's video, we're going to be looking at this, which is the Fujifilm DL270 Zoom. Could this be the best 35mm point-and-shoot camera? Well, it could be, but I'm going to tell you now. I don't really know the answer to the question because this is the first point-and-shoot that I've tr made a video about. So I am pleased with some of the results, though. Um, drop a comment, let me know what you think about the pictures later. Before we get into the shoot and look at some images, let me tell you a little bit about this camera. The DL270 Zoom is a 35mm compact zoom camera from Fujifilm which was released in 1994. It was named the Discovery 270 Zoom in the United States. It features a Fujinon f5 to f9.5 35 to 70mm zoom lens and has a protective built-in lens cover. The focus distance is 0.9 meters to infinity, but at 70 millimeters it is from 0.65 meters to infinity. It features multiple flash modes, including auto, red eye, fill, and of course, off. It uses a drop in film loading system and is able to accept DX coded film from 50 to 1600 ISO. It uses a pre wind function for film transport, therefore, the exposure counter displays the number of exposures remaining and decreases as exposures are captured. It's powered by a CR123A battery. It's compact, light and slips into a coat or jacket pocket easily. This is extremely simple to use, probably the most simple camera I've ever used in my entire life. Seriously. I have linked the user manual to this camera in the description below. If you want to see a detailed explanation of how it all works, you can check that out. Anyway, let's get into the images. So I used Ilford XP2 Super 400 film for this shoot. I chose to use a black and white film as I think it will put the camera under a bit more pressure to perform, but we'll see about that. We start off on top of Tumbalum. Often mistaken for a mountain, it's actually a large hill. At the top of the hill near its summit are the remains of what is presumed to be an Iron Age hill fort, which gives you wide panoramic views of Newport and beyond. So I'm going to try a panorama, so to do a panorama all you do is put the mode to P. Got some interesting light on these hills, so let's have a look over here. That was really nice. A couple of days later we headed back out to the opposite end of Newport, to the sea wall. Alright, let's do a portrait. Okay, so... Yeah, can you turn slightly towards me? I just want a little bit of light on your face. Just... Yeah, just like that, that's good. Okay.
finish it right in the middle there. Straight. Later that day, we found ourselves yet again in the depths of the Welsh countryside. It's kind of ironic that I find myself yet again in nature after my last video, which was all about being in the city. But you know what? This camera is like a day trip camera for me. I think this is a camera that I would take on day trips, on days out. So, you know, let's just see what we get here. a result of the storm we had the other day which I should put my Instagram. Um, I was gonna go out and shoot in the storm but I didn't for various reasons. But I think this fallen tree could be a result of that the other day. It seems to be fresh and broken. I don't quite have the focal lens I wanted for that one then. So this camera also has a panorama mode and it's not a true panorama, basically what the camera does is it cuts off a part of the, the top and the bottom of the frame. But if you look through the viewfinder you can actually see two dotted lines which indicate um, where that where that cutoff is. So you can frame it. I'll do a panorama so you can see. Since we come back to Wales, I've got a newfound appreciation for trees. I never really stopped to think before, but they're really beautiful. And you know. it's really nice, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. This camera should be something that anyone can use, really. So, with the last five exposures, I'm going to give it to Jebek. I'm going to switch around, and she's going to have a go at shooting me. Ooh, flash as well. Well, the camera thought it needed it, so that's why it flashed. You be the judge. Jebek shots better than mine <laughs> let me know in the comments below <laughs> Anything you think, really. Why flash? Well, there, there is an option to turn the flash off if you definitely don't want to use the flash. GoPro battery has 
run out so we're on the phone what about this tree because the contrast of the sky and the tree looks pretty good alternatively you could try to get those sheep but I'm pretty sure the tree's gonna look a bit better Ooh, the sun is just sweeping over the hill as well Whoa. Uh, Film's rebound. Okay. Yeah, I'm turning it off. Yeah. So, what's the verdict on this camera? Well, considering it only cost me £4.20, it's a great price, I know. Um, I think it's a steal. For me, this is a camera that I'll take on road trips, social events, you know, when we can again, parties, things of this nature. It's a camera that's very fun and easy to use. I'm pretty sure that anyone can pick this up and use it straight away. It's pretty solid. Um, it's all plastic, of course, but if you see the scratches here, I did drop it from about, not me actually, but it was dropped from about a meter's height um, Actually, the first time I took this out last year sometime when I was just testing it out. And um, it survived with just a few scratches. So I think this is a camera you can, you know, throw in your bag. It's, it's, it's not really something that's going to get damaged very easily. It could be ideal for kids if you have them to, if they want to take pictures. You know, this is a solid camera. I do like the zoom feature. Um, it gives this point and shoot a little more versatility with composition and framing and I especially like to use it for portraits like I said before this camera is perfect for socializing it's unobtrusive it's fun you can pass it around to your mates to use you know what's not to like well potentially image quality I am used to making high quality images because I like to have the option to make large prints of my work and this is not really a serious contender in that department however that doesn't mean you can't make prints with this camera Small 6x4s, for example, are perfect, like we used to get back in the 90s and whatever. But I see this as a camera that I'll use to make images for social media and sharing with friends, things like that. Nothing too serious. As for my favourite image, it really has to be the final one that Shebek made. I love the composition, that light is just incredible, and the sun swept over just the right time and we were able to capture a real dynamic image. Let me know your favourite or any other thoughts you have about the video in the comments below. As always, thank you very much for watching, subscribe and like for more, and I'll see you in the next video.